Personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Home loan comparison. Get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. OneNote, you're not required to, but if you have access and would like to follow along, we're in the icon on the left-hand side, the Practice Problems tab, and the 7060 Home Loan Comparison tab. Also, take a look at the Immersive Reader. Our Practice Problems are also in the text area. Same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages and either listened to or read in them. Information is on the left-hand side. We're going to use that to do calculations on the right-hand side. we got the three loans that we're going to be doing comparing and contrasting with. We're going to do a payment calculation for the three of them, amortization tables. We'll break the amortization table out into year-by-year -year summaries. We'll also discuss the different tools that you could use for the calculations of the amortization tables, for example, which include online tools, and we'll compare and contrasting making amortization tables online and doing the payment calculation online with the tools such as Excel and how you might integrate that information into a more comprehensive strategy as you're doing your planning. So when you're doing planning, you might first think, well, what kind of loans could I get and try to figure out the basics of the loan? We might first come up with the loan amount, of course, and we could get the loan amount by either trying to think about how much the home costs, how much down payment I have to put, and therefore how much loan amount I would need to get, and then try to figure out the payment from there and the standard loan structure, which could be like a 30-year fix would be the standard structure, and then we could vary it from that point. Uh, or you might try to think of it from the ground up, try to think about how much uh, revenue or income you have and how much banks are willing to possibly finance in terms of our income strategy, think about how much financing we can get and then how much down payment we have and then how much how much loan we can get. So those are the two ways you might come up with basically the loan amounts. Once we have the loan amounts, we might compare and contrast different loan amounts and compare and contrast different number of years. And then of course the interest rates are something that could uh, vary as well. So we'll do the three comparisons, loan one, two, and this should be three down here for the different loan amounts, the different years here, and the different rates. So the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll do a calculation for the, for, the, uh, for the amount. So we're gonna say for the payment amount. So there we got, we got the 168,000, the number of years we're gonna say are the 15 years, and then the rate is going to be that 6.5, so we can do a payment calculation. Now you could use Excel to do the payment calculation, or you might use one of these online tools. Notice this is rounded to the nearest dollar. So I could use the online tool. I could go to the 168,000, for example, and go jump over here online, say 168,000. I'm not promoting this particular tool. There's a lot of different loan calculators that have different pros and cons to them. But if you type in loan calculator into your browser, you can find some kind of loan calculation tool. And then I'm gonna say this is 15 years and we'll say the rate of interest. What did we say? The interest rate was 6.5, 6.5. And then we're gonna say it's a monthly and every month, let's do the calculation. And so we get to the 1463 uh, about and then 46 cents. So we'll say 1463 because we rounded it over here. And so there's our calculation. We can also do it with Excel. I highly recommend using Excel because note that you could, every time you make a change, just input the data back into this calculator. You can also copy, right click and have duplicate tabs. So you can go back and forth between the two tabs. But if you have this information into something like Excel, you can populate the data on the left-hand side and change the data much more easily, in my opinion. And it's pretty easy once you get the Excel formulas down. It looks a little bit tricky, but you got this little tool down here. We, we do do this in Excel if you want to practice doing it uh, in Excel for practice. So you got the, I put the negative up front to, that'll make it a positive number and the end result, that's how we got this calculation. And then brackets, the rate would be the 6.5%. So that's this cell right here divided by 12 because notice whenever we use the rates here, these are yearly rates. We don't talk about monthly rates because the rates are typically small if we do that. So we talk about yearly rates, but then because it's a monthly kind of component, we got to divide it by 12 to get it to the months, comma, the number of periods is going to be then the 15. Now that is in years. We have to have that in months too. 15 years times 12 will give us the number of months and then comma. And then finally, 
we have the present value, with this, which is the starting point of the loan, loan which is the 168000 Then if we go to loan number two and do a similar calculation, this one is the 223000 It's a 30-year loan, so we're going to the standard 30. These are the two most common, uh, you would think, uh, loan <clears throat> years, 15 or 30. 30 might, might be the more standard, and then 15. And then we're going to say that that's going to calculate to the 1484. I could put that into my loan calculator. And again, I might copy. So I got two tabs here and I can toggle back and forth, which is kind of nice. I could do that. I could say this is going to be 223, 223, and this is 30 year. And the rate for that one is 7%. 7% calculated out. And we get about uh, 1484, about if I round it up. So I'm going to say, okay, that's good. 1484, that's about what we have here because I rounded it. We can also do that in Excel, which I recommend doing. We do do this in Excel, which would be equals negative. I put the negative up front because I think it's the easiest thing to type that way. Payment and then brackets. And we're going to say the rate now is going to be the 7%, but that's a yearly rate. So we divide it by 12 and then comma, the number of periods is going to be 30 but that's in years, we need months. So we multiply it times 12, and then comma, the present value is the 223,000. That's gonna be our 1484. So you can see these end amounts here are fairly, you know, fairly close, even though we've got this difference in terms of the loan amount and the years and the rate. So it's really kind of nice to have these things kind of side by side and you can run different scenarios and see change each one of these factors such as the numbers of years and the rate and the loan balance one by one so you can get a feel so for what's the impact on the payments but that's not the only thing we want to get a feel for we also want to get a feel for what's the impact on the interest and the principal components as well because those will have an impact on the taxes that we're paying possibly and the amount of equity in the home because the more we pay down on the loan, the bigger the difference between the loan value and the home value, which is the equity, that's our net asset uh, value. The last one, we got the 199,000. We got the number of years is 20, and then we've got the 6.5 on the rate. So that's gonna give us the 1484 again, very, you know, we got the same number here, even though we've got the different uh, inputs because the loan's different and the years and the rate. So, so let's go over here and calculate that one back online again. Let's make another tab. I'm gonna right click and duplicate the tab and say this then is for 199, 199, 199, 000, and the rate then is gonna be tw or 20 years, 20. And then we said that this was 6.5, 6.5 on the rate, calculate. And so that's gonna be then the 1484 about as we saw so we got this over here 1484 so note the tools we can have online we got our three calculators we can put them in separate tabs and do some toggling back and forth to see the differences there but i still think it's easier to do in excel because in excel you got these three comparisons right there side by side and if i want to change any of the data on the left hand side it will automatically change this table this table on the right hand side. I can then look at my payment calculation, which would be negative. I put the negative up front and it would be then the, the rate again, which would be the 6.5. That's a yearly rate. So we divide it by 12 comma number of periods would be 20 this time. That's in years. So we multiply it times 12 and then comma the present value this time at the 199,000. Uh, and that gives us the 1484 as well. So now we're gonna to go to the amortization table, which also is something that we can do online. So I could say, okay, let's do the amortization table for this first one. So I can go over here and say, let's check it out online, go to that first one. And here, all I've gotta do is press this, view the amortization table, and boom, they give us an amortization table on down below, which is nice. But again, it's kind of static. I can change the data up top, but I, I can't really do cell references and I can't summarize the data on a year by year basis, which we really kind of want to do uh, as easily. Some online tools might do that a little bit more clearly, but I, I, in Excel, if we get good at the Excel, we can do that quite easily. So once we'll do the amortization table, 
and I'll, we'll, we'll look at it and then we'll break it out on a year by year basis. This year by year basis breakout is something that's a lot nicer to use when you're trying to figure things like your yearly tax impact and when you're trying to figure things like uh, the effect on the equity on a yearly basis, not so much on a monthly basis. Now, of course, this will be a long table because we'd have to calculate this down for on a month by month basis. This first one was for 15 years. So it's going to have a lot of components, but we'll just do a couple calculations up top. And then in Excel, you can just copy the format formulas down. So although it looks quite tedious, it's pretty easy to do. So we've got the 168. That's where we would start. We've got then the the uh, the first payment and we calculated the payments to be this 1464. That is a rounded number the interest calculation then would be the prior balance 168,000 times the rate which is 0.065 6.5% that would be the interest for a year then we divide it by 12 because we're talking about months that's where we're getting let's do that one more time because I messed up 168,000 this is going to be times 0.065 divided by 12 so there's the 910 we could also do it this way. We could say, let's take the monthly rate, 0.065, divide it by 12, and there's the monthly rate, which is quite small. That's why we don't talk about monthly rates. But I could do that first and then multiply it times the amount of the 168,000, and we get that 910 uh, again. So then we could subtract this out. So if this is the payment and that's the interest, 1463 minus the 910 gives us the 553. Now, remember, the payment here, we're trying to keep that constant. And therefore, the payment for that, the cost of having of doing that, that convenience is there's going to be a there's going to be a change in the interest in principle from period to period. So this will not remain the same. And that's going to cause us our problems when we try to do projections into the future for things like taxes and the amount of equity that's going to be remaining on the loan the interest is like the rent on the money so we're borrowing the money it's not free we got to pay interest on it just like if we were borrowing like renting a place or something like that and the rent just goes away we're not gonna, we're just renting for the use of the money and then the loan amount the loan decrease is the amount that's going to decrease the loan balance so if i'm paying 1463 minus the rent on the money 910 the loan balance is going down by the 553 that therefore, if my prior balance was 168,000 minus the 553, you got to decrease to the 167,447. That's the new loan balance. You might call this just the the balance or the principal, and then the decrease in the principal or other terms you might use. And then we do the same thing, but notice it's slightly different here. Same payment slightly different breakout between the interest and the loan that's going to cause us problems when we're trying to estimate out into the future this calculation looks something like this 167447 this number here divided by we're going to say the i mean sorry multiply times the 6.5.065 that's for a year divided by 12 to get a month and so we've got the 907 so there's the 907 so it's a slightly different because we took a, a smaller loan balance to calculate it. So if I take this 1463 minus the 907, that gives us our 556 with the loan decrease. And if we take our prior loan balance, 167447 minus the 556, we get to the 166890. Now, if I do this all the way down, you'll note that there's the same payment slightly difference in the interest and the loan the interest going down each time because the rent on the money is lowering given the fact that we're lowering lowering the loan balance or the principal if the payment stays the same and the rent on the money is going down that means the loan decrease is going up meaning the loans going the, the loan is going down at an increasing rate right so that you can see this trend going down here the interest of course then is going down and down each month the loan is going up and uh, as we go and we're going to do this all the way down if we look at this all the way down then at the bottom of this table and this looks quite tedious but again you could just copy it all the way down if you did this in excel we get down to zero on down below at that last payment and here's the breakout there's the payment there's the interest there's the principal a lot different down here that has a lot different impact on our tax calculation and our equity calculation on a payment by payment basis but 
We don't typically want to see it on a payment by payment basis. We typically want to see it on a year by year basis. So if I compared it to a year by year basis, I could take this data on the left hand side, everything with a one over here is in year one. So here's all the year ones down to 12 months. And here's all the year twos that go down to 24 months. And so if I can summarize that data, meaning taking all the payments and putting them in a year by year, taking all the interest in a year by year and so on, it would look something like this. So in year one, uh, we'd have, actually this is another amortization table. Hold let me move over here. I'm going to move over to the right. So it's going to be over here. And so now we've got year one is at the 17, uh, 562. Now that number is fairly easy to get because I could take, I could take this amount. I could take this amount and multiply it times 12, one, four, six, three times 12 about that number's rounded. So it's not going to be exact, but we get about the 17, 560, 62, it's again, it's rounded, so it's not exact, but that number fairly easy. The interest, we can't do that though, because the interest changes each time we make a payment. So we'd actually have to add up the interest in the amortization table. That's something with our online tool, we cannot do as well. You might have some tools that can, they can get you more detail, but it's something that most tools don't do as well. They give you the amortization table and the payment amount and, and then that's basically it in Excel. You can start to pull a, a whole lot more data from this information. So that's going to give us then that. And same with the loan decrease. The loan decrease over here is also something that I'd have to add them all up for the entire year to get the proper amount. The loan balance is the amount that I want at the end of the period, 161,159. That's the, this number at the end of the first year, 161,157. Uh, and that that will help us to see where we stand or where we will stand at the end of year one. So this is a really nice table to have because then I can start to think about, okay, how much am I going to pay on a yearly basis? And then I can think about what's going to be my interest, which I can use for my tax calculations on a yearly basis. And I, and I can start to get a more in-depth kind of scenario or projection that way. And I can look at my loan decrease, which will help me to decide what the impact on the on the um, equity is the difference between the loan balance and the, the home value which has two factors we can consider and one is going to be well the loan itself uh, as the loan goes down that's this factor that as the principal goes down then there's going to be a big bigger or widening gap even if the value of the home remains the same and the other is we're hoping the value of the home goes up so if the value of the home goes up then that would also increase the the uh, equity. So then year two, the payments are the same. Notice the interest will be different and the loan balance will be different. This interest is gonna be significant if we're gonna do tax calculations. So we wanna make sure that we're taking into consideration there are significant differences in the interest payments and the loan decrease, even though the payment amount is the same, which is gonna have a significant impact on our tax calculations as well as where we stand in terms of equity uh, value in the home. We could do the same thing, of course, for the other loans here. So if I did the amortization table for the second loan, so here's the second one, the 223, we could do that with an online tool. So here's the 223, I could just say amortization table, boom. But I can't really do anything else with this. I could still toggle back and forth, compare and contrast, but I can't really make it into a, a year by year breakout or like use any formulas to tie to it or anything like that as we could with Excel. In Excel, we could build the amortization table fairly easily and we could do it by, by basically, here's the 233. I'll just do one calculation on the loan amount, 7%. So it's gonna be then this 223000 times 0 0.07 and then we'll say divided by 12. So there's gonna be the interest to 1301 about so if I took the 1484 minus the 1301, we get about 183 loan decrease. If I took the 223000 minus the 183, we get about 222817. If we do that all the way down, you can see this difference between the interest and the loan uh, decrease all the way down. And this one goes all the way down to the 30 years. And after 30 years, 
it'll get down to zero. It's a tedious calculation. If you were to look at this, it would make your, it, it, you know, it obviously makes our eyes roll over to look at those many numbers. And, we, and it's hard for us to use projections on it. It would be more useful for us to break that down into a year by year summary, which would look something like this. If we broke that out on a year by year. So now we've got the 17807, that first number we can get to fairly easily by taking this 1484 times 12, 17808 about rounding. And so, so there we have that, but the interest and the loan balance, those are gonna change on a year by year. So then we can, we could take a look at the differences from year to year, as we can see here. And we can break this out on a year by year breakout and we can then do some comparing and contrasting to this loan versus the prior loan on a year by year breakout it's going down to 30 years instead of the 15 years which can cause us a little bit of confusion but it's a lot more easy for us to consider this compared to this for the two loans than comparing the two amortization tables we could do the last one as well so that's the 11920 so years so we're going to say okay let's check that one out that's the third one. There's the 119. I can make an amortization table with our online calculator like that. We can also go over here. We did it in Excel. We can make our amortization table. So here's our amortization table 199. We would do the same calculations and you could see the full amortization table. This is going down 20 years now. 20 years. There is that. And then of course we would like to break it out on possibly a year by year breakout, which would look something like this. So now we've go, broken it out year by year. Here's the payment, here's the interest, loan decrease, and the loan balance. This is a lot easier to compare to this than the two amortization tables are to, are to uh, do the comparison. It's a lot easier to do this in Excel. Now in Excel, you could do this with formulas or you can use pivot tables. So here's the same thing with a pivot, pivot table uh, type of calculation we did here and so you could use the pivot tables we do do that in the practice problem so if you're interested in looking at this and how to calculate these in excel which i think is the is the best way to go if you're really trying to dig into the numbers uh then take a look at those practice problems and we'll build these amortization tables i'll show you a couple ways to break that out into a year-by-year -year summary